Hello, this is Dr. Michael Hassan, the engineering doctor, and this is lecture number 21, CPLD and FPGA of the chapter of chapter 4, Design with Standard Modules, of the course titled Digital Logic Design or Digital Electronics or Digital Systems. The next slide is a disclaimer for you to read. There are many references in digital logic design. I set three references here. Chapter 4 contents uh, included uh, decoders, decoder expansion, uh, design with decoders, code converters, encoders, multiplexers, multiplexer expansion, design with multiplexers, demultiplexers, read-only memory, and design with read-only memory, programmable logic array, programmable array logic, we covered all these topics in previous lectures. Uh, and uh, today we'll talk about complex programmable logic devices and field programmable gate array or FPGA. What simple programmable logic device? Uh, all the previous programmable logic devices are considered simple programmable logic devices or SPLDS. Simple programmable logic device include read-only memories, programmable logic arrays, programmable array logics, and GALS and generic array logics. Computer-aided design, CAD programs, and hardware descriptions uh, languages, or known as HDLs, such as CUPL or Couple, Apple, ABEL, and uh, PAL. Uh, ASM are widely available to program SPLDS. These programs accept logic equations or the truth table as inputs and automatically generate the required fuse map for the selected PLD. So you have to select the PLD first, the programmable logic device. Then, then the program will select the will select the right program, will configure the structure of the device that you have selected, and will generate the corresponding fuse map. And the fuse map can be downloaded into a PLD programmer, which will blow the required fuses and verify the operation of the PLD. Some PLDs are erasable and programmable by the user in a similar manner to the EPROMs and e 2 prom so, like the GAL chip, it uh, could be reprogrammed, could be erased and reprogrammed. Some chips need to be erased by exposing the chip to UV lights. Uh, others could be erased electrically. So, it depends on the technology of the module that you are using. Now, implementing both combinational and sequential networks. The generic array logic or GAL devices and the complex programmable devices or CPLD and the field programmable gate array FPGA devices are all contain both gates and flip-flops. So both combinational and sequential networks could be implemented by using these devices. For CPLDs and FPGAs, we need an advanced hardware description language such as Verilag or VHDL. We are using VHDL in this sequence of uh, lectures and uh, to generate v the netless file for the network or the switching uh, function or system by choosing a specific PLD. How it works also, you will have the program, you will compile it, you go, you pick out the device uh, that uh, with this, that meets your specifications, then the program will generate the netless file. The netless file could be downloaded to the device, to CPLD or FPGA, by a small circuit called the burner of the programmer, and or you can take the netless file and to to an integrated circuit manufacturer to generate an ASIC, which is application-specific integrated circuit. Nowadays, actually, computers could be uh, downloaded into a single FPGAs, uh, a PGA. An FPGA is quite expensive sometimes. It depends on the size of the FPGA. 
and the and the manufacturer so they go with variety on large range of prices complex programmable logic device or CAPLD the structure of the device is shown on the right hand side of the slide CPLD uses a pal like architecture with a programmable end array and, or, and a fixed or array followed by flip flops. It consists of a number of logic blocks and input output IOs blocks. The logic blocks communicate with one another using signals routed via a programmable interconnect and communicate with the outside world via IO blocks. As you can see, input output of blocks, there's one here and there's one here. And those are the logical blocks, logical blocks, and between them, programmable inter, uh, interconnection. You see, between those two sets of blocks, of logic blocks. Each logic block consists of a number of macro cells, which are considered the building block of the CPLD. The macro cell has a ball structure with a programmable product term array or and array or gate, polarity control, and a flip-flop. Polarity control offers implementation of either the true or the complement of an expression, whichever uses the fewest product terms. The size of the logical block varies in may have 4 to 20 microcells. So this is the CPLD, uh, and uh, it's a wonderful device that you can build a medium micro, uh, medium networks on it, sequential or combinational networks. The field programmable gate array, uh, FPGA for short, it consists of a large number of logic cell and I.O. blocks as well. The logic cells communicate with uh, one another using signals routed via horizontal and vertical channels and communicate to the outside world via I.O. box, as shown in the diagram, which is coming soon. So you see the diagram here. So we have consists of a large number of logic cells. You see those the small square logic cells. And we have I surrounded, those logic cells surrounded by I or black. Each logic cell communicate with each other by signal routed via horizontal and vertical channels. That you see those channels here, those lines, okay, between the logic cells, there are vertical lines and horizontal lines, and this is for communication. Uh, to communicate to the outside world, they communicate to the outside world via the I.O. blocks and the FPGA surrounded with, uh, with the I.O. blocks. Now, the logic cell or logical block often consists of four input lookup table, LUT, and the flip of lab as shown in the diagram. So you have clock, you have LUT, which is a lookup table, and we have a flip of lab and we have the output. Now, the output of the logic cell can be either registered or unregistered. See, we have a flip-flop here, so we can select either a registered or not registered by using this a multiplexer unit or a switch. Now, the LUT could be configured to build a, a combinational network uh, it depends on the switching function that you are building. So it is uh, it's quite interesting device. And uh, this device nowadays could be used to implement a variety of functions, whether they were sequential or unsequential functions and networks. And also the FPGA, as I said, could be used for a complete complicated system design so complete complicated hardware could be downloaded on a single PGA. I would like to thank you so much. Please subscribe by clicking on the blue circle, uh, the logo with the letter I inside the circle. So click on it to subscribe. I sincerely 
Hopefully to see you very soon. Sincerely, Dr. Hassan. Thanks.